All right. Uh, I know you've heard me in, uh, enough today, but in this capacity, uh, I'll be speaking as an election attorney as well as a political scientist. Um, here's the answer to the New York Times. The New York Times doesn't do actual analysis of polls. They don't do that in their paper. But they do concede that the exact same company, Edison Research Group, has total accuracy in predicting overseas. That is, we can overturn the Ukrainian election in other elections because exit polls, when done by Edison, outside the boundaries of the US, are absolutely accurate with their margin of errors. It's only when the universal laws of statistics are suspended on US territory are they meaningless. Same companies, same polling techniques, our State Department uses it as red flags, not to certify, but when it happens here, we simply accept it no matter how implausible the numbers are. So all of them flunk my statistics 101 class. It's, it's absurd. Here, here's the fundamental quick lesson. And if some of you have already taken 101 statistics, right? Here's what they've been teaching since time immemorial, right? His mister, right? It, the acronym stands for, right? History. When you're doing polling, and I've done commercial polling, I apologize, some of it was for George Soros on marijuana, right? <laughs> I've written reports, right? I've done survey research. It's, it's how I made money uh, on the side. But when you look at his mister, you start with history. When you're doing a survey, a poll, a tracking poll, and the numbers are off, uh, you say, did something happen, right? It's before it's on Friday. Did, you know, Bill Clinton have sex with three interns? Or there's some historical intervention that explains the Tuesday vote. Now, here's the pro, uh, the, exit poll, right? There's no historical intervention. You vote, you walk out, you tell someone how you vote, right? You're not asking people how they're gonna vote, you're asking them why they're so accurate is how did you just vote, right? So historically they're the most accurate polls. So if there's results that are coming out, you know, outside the margin of error significantly, these results, you work through the Hisminster. What's the eye? They never get, the New York Times, all the news that fits into its vision, right, never gets to the second test. The instrumentation, it's his mister. History, there's no history to really look at. I, instrumentation. It, like any science or social science, is your instrumentation recording accurately? How the hell would we know it's proprietary, it's secret, it's owned by partisan for-profit entities? How dare the New York Times and the nation or any of them suggest that any of that is scientific? We have a non-functioning, non-transparent uh, democracy, right? And for these people to, uh, and for Nancy Pelosi to suggest that, oh, the exit polls are fine, I mean, she needs to step down. If she doesn't know basic statistics 101, get the hell out of politics. Okay. Hi, Bob. <laughs> All right. Um, his sample, right? You then move down and go, well, let's look at our sample, right? Uh, is it representative? Is it done random? So you check your sample. Uh, implementation, did something go wrong? Your people outside the polls were smoking crack and missing voters, right? Is that, you know, you didn't get the question, who did you vote for for president? You didn't write it right. Uh, so that's the HISMI. And then, of course, as you go down, uh, to the survey, right, that survey question. It's not difficult to say who did you vote for for president. That's, you're not messing up there. Or technical problems, right? 
Did you not add up your numbers correctly? Did you leave data out? So, uh, and as you move, is there some type of random error that occurred? And finally, did you not record the numbers wrong? Did you put something down that was off? Here's the problem, is in the US, we never get to uh, step two. We never get to checking the instruments because they're uncheckable, undemocratic, uncheckable, non-transparent. So that's why I sued Edison, right? My, uh, I have a paralegal and I have another lawyer in my law firm. So I sued and as much as I love Pete and the DNC, I did it on behalf of the Green Party, which I created. Why? Because the Green Party says yes. <laughs> the Democrats don't. Not, a lot of my money uh, over the years has come from progressive Democrats, bless them the ones that disagree with their party that won't challenge these issues, right? So I sued Edison Research Group. Here was the basis of that suit. Many people have asked me. Uh, it was Johnson, Pete Johnson, uh, a member of the Franklin County Green Party versus Edison Research Group. And here's what I argued. I argued that Edison Research Group is a state agent. It's an agent of the state. Why? Because it exists primarily to peddle bad, implausible numbers and not to reveal its methodology for endorsing unscientific bad numbers as accurate. They are in collusion with the Secretary of State's office. Right? That's go what's going on. They're in collusion. Right? They get special treatment outside the polls. They share data together. And when the numbers come in, and it looks like, you know, Kerry's winning 51-48, and of course, the computers go down and the vote count goes out to Chattanooga, Tennessee at a server farm for Republicans. The numbers come back, they're completely reversed. It's absolutely unlikely, not likely to occur, you know, in uh, one in 800 years or so. What happens, what does Edison does? It says, let me wait and adjust the numbers. So this looks absolutely impossible. I'm going to adjust the numbers because we're going to accept whatever the official numbers are, even if a county like Miami County has admitted they got 2,500 at least cyber votes, even if there's missing in, for, in Warren County, right? Even if Warren County comes in, with 10,000 unexpected votes, all one punch for Bush. You know, uh, they'll say, look, they had a level 10 Homeland Security alert. Bin Laden was walking through the city riding on a camel in Warren, Ohio. They had to seize all the ballots for protection, right? So they just accept the official number, no matter how implausible. And then when you ask, as we did in 04, 56 of the 88 counties tell us what? We destroyed. The evidence is destroyed. I mean, I was there when we got the bad news from Holmes County. It was, you know, a county where they claim old order Amish leaped into their bu uh, buggies right before the close of polls, whipped their horses, uh, raced to the polls, 10,000 that weren't expected to vote. And here was the tragedy, is somebody had been making coffee in the voter vault, which is protected by two keys, Democrat, Republican. You need two people to open it. Apparently the cost of coffee was so expensive, they were building, they had a big one in there, like a 12 copper. It fell and destroyed 20,000 ballots. And with the Amish, they hadn't heard of the technology known as the towel, where you kind of mop it up, right? And then the tragedy in Youngstown, Ohio, and I, you know, I don't care what the Sopranos said, you know, they're only allegedly mobsters. When Waste Management Inc. went in and somehow had both keys and took every ballot and recycled them because they're green, that's a mistake. That's the implausible things we must accept to accept these weird numbers that Edison Research Group is colluding with the Secretary of State. And the numbers are only weird in the battleground states, 
right? Perfectly in the red states and the blue states, perfectly accurate. Uh, and they'll say, well, you know, Wisconsin's diverse and complex. Okay, you can get California at 0% wrong and Texas, which seem like diverse states to me, but you can't figure out Wisconsin? Okay, and finally, the, the other uh, lawsuit uh, I brought in Ohio, right? I, I requested all the information from the primary because it didn't look right to me. You know, the exit polls were 10 points uh, uh, off. You know, Bernie was supposed to get more votes. He was supposed to lose, but not that big. So I requested, you know, can I look at all the county with ballot images? 14 of them write me and say it doesn't exist. I'm like, it has to exist, right? You've got these scanners. You've got audit logs and ballot imaging. Well, in Ohio, apparently, you turn off your security, your audit logs, and your ballot imaging uh, because you want it to be used for write-in only, right? So the default setting, the way it operates, is to make a copy, an image, of every ballot. They were turned off in 14 counties, many of those counties with suspect votes. And when I sued, I went in and said, you know, this is, this is wrong. They bought a state-of-the-art system with security on it. I was told that I was impugning the integrity of the Ohio voting system. And I said, pardon, have you heard of Ken Blackwell? <laughs> have you heard of an open liar and thief that used to be the Secretary of State? How am I impugning the integrity of me and my fellow election activists? We're not the problem. We're the solution. So let me leave, my, uh, leave you with that, you know. We're the solution, we know what's wrong, and we're gonna win this because transparency is the issue, accuracy is the issue, and ultimately we're fighting over the salvation of democracy in this country. Thank you.